For the last three days, we've been talking about the major wind event that's going to lead to rapid fire spread for the August Complex, the North Complex, the Creek Fire, and the Bobcat Fire. Well, that extreme wind event is set to hit this evening and could bring some 30 to 40 mile per hour winds and even a red flag warning in some places. Now that wind event is associated with this low pressure system that you see moving into California. While this will bring some cooler temperatures and some higher humidities that will help our fire spread, those 30 to 40 mile per hour wind gusts when they hit this evening are really going to do some damage. So that's what we're going to be talking about throughout the course of this video. Now you can see this low pressure system sitting off the coast of California and throughout the day today it's just going to move closer and closer to California and it looks like it's actually going to be hitting a bit earlier than was forecasted yesterday. Yesterday we were, we were saying it was going to hit around 11 p.m. Now if we look at the wind gusts you can see it's actually going to start having its effect around 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. where we get these gusty winds on the surface around the August Complex, the North Complex, and the Creek Fire. While this will bring some effect to the Bobcat Fire, the majority of these 30 to 40 mile per hour winds and red flag warning are mostly for the North Complex and the Creek Fire. So that's what the wind gusts are doing. One thing I will note is there actually appears to be a second wind event that's going to happen Friday from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. where we might even get gustier winds than today in the areas around the North Complex and the Creek Fire. So that's something that wasn't really in the forecast previously that we now have to worry about. Now the other thing that's going on with the winds and this low pressure system, if we back up to the current time here, you can see that they're mostly blowing from the south and southwest. The reason this is important, one, it's leading to some rapid fire growth on the northern edges of basically all of our fires. The other thing it's doing though is spreading out some of that smoke that was previously sitting along the coastlines here. In fact, if we look at the satellite imagery, you can see that the coast is relatively clear and there's even a few clouds moving in at this point. The valley remains fairly smoky though and you can see that on this air quality map. You can see, especially around the Castle Fire and the Creek Fire, there is some very unhealthy to hazardous air still in the region. But again, with those onshore winds, that's been really clearing the smoke out of the whole Bay Area, and that's going to continue throughout the day today. One thing I will note about these winds, though, is they're going to bring some cooler temperatures and some higher humidities to all of our fires because they're blowing from the ocean. So while the extreme wind gusts are going to lead to some rapid fire spread, these cooler temps and higher humidities are definitely going to help firefighters. So if we look at the air quality forecast for today, don't pay attention to this blank spot right here. I'm sure that's actually where the most unhealthy air is, not no bad air quality at all. The other things I'll point out is the valley, while it says moderate, I find that a little hard to believe considering how much smoke remains in the area. While the winds will be picking up throughout the day, and we'll be able to spread some of that smoke out, I don't see it being moderate air quality in the valley just yet. Now, when it comes to the forecast for tomorrow, it's saying there's going to be some significant improvement, and honestly, I could see this happening. With the cooler temps, the higher humidities, all our fires should start to calm down tomorrow after that wind event passes, and then with those winds, It'll just start to push some of the smoke out of the area, so I think we're going to see some improved air tomorrow. While it might not be great, it'll at least be better than it was this last weekend. So when it comes to the air quality, really the major fire that has been producing a lot of the smoke recently has been the Castle Fire, or also called the Sequoia Complex. And you can see this shows the fire perimeter and the hotspots. The Castle Fire actually looks like it's calmed down from yesterday, and you can really see that on the satellite map. If you remember from the last few days, the Castle Fire right here was just, it just had a huge smoke plume coming off of it. And that was what created a lot of the smoke that we see in the valley. Well, as you can see, that Castle Fire has calmed down this morning with the cooler temperatures, higher humidities. So that's some encouraging news for when it comes to air quality. I will say when it comes to the Castle Fire or the Sequoia Complex, 
It's up to 122,000 acres, and it's 12% contained. So while that's good news that the Castle Fire has reduced in fire behavior, it's actually bad news when it comes to the Creek Fire. The reason for that is all that smoke from the Castle Fire has actually been creating a protective layer over the southern edge and has been keeping temperatures a lot lower and winds a lot over lower on the southern edge of this fire. So as that smoke clears out, the inversion that has been in place for the last few days is going to lift. Now, don't worry about the word inversion. Just think about it as the flu of a fireplace. As you open up the flu, the smoke is going to be able to rise out of the area and then you're going to get some air mixing and new air flowing in that is going to fuel some fire growth. So that's the main thing I'm thinking about in the southern edge here, if that inversion is going to lift or not, because when it does, we should see some more active fire behavior. The major area of concern though, and really my major area of concern for all the fires we're going to be talking about, is the northern edge of the creek fire here. And the reason for that is we've seen some really active fire behavior in the last 24 hours. There's a few reasons behind that. One, the trees in this area are about 80 to 90% dead and dry because of bark beetle kill. There have also been those southerly winds that have been creating spot fires up to a mile away from the main fire. And on top of that, it's just some steep terrain that's really hard to work in. So when it comes to this northern edge, and really this video in general, if there's any minute you pay attention to in this video, it's this next minute because this map is going to perfectly show why this wind event is so important. So this is looking at the Creek Fire and the Wharf S Fire model, which shows how the fire and the winds above it interact with each other. So you'll notice if I play starting at about 12 o'clock today, the fire doesn't appear to be spreading all that fast, but once that cold front moves in at about four, five, six o'clock, you see this fire spread just rapidly increase. And you can see the winds blowing the fire farther and farther to the north. So that's really why this wind event is so important. It's gonna lead to that rapid spread. The other thing it will do is pick up some of these burning embers, toss them ahead of the fire, creating spot fires, which then connect with the major blaze. So that's not good news for the northern edge of the Creek Fire. Around five or six today, we could see some rapid fire spread. And kind of the bad news of that cold front moving up in time, instead of being at 11 p.m., it's now more at five or six. That means when those extreme winds hit, it's going to be warmer with lower humidity, which is just going to make firefighting even harder than it already is. So when it comes to the Creek Fire, you can see we're now up to 228,000 acres and we're at 18% containment. I'll be interested to see what happens with this number as that inversion breaks up in the south and those 30 to 40 mile per hour wind gusts really start taking off in the north. Now, when it comes to evacuations, the link is in the description. Too many for me to possibly go over, but if your location is on this list, Cal Fire asks that you evacuate your home. So when it comes to structures destroyed, we're now at 742 structures destroyed. And I hate to say it, but this number is likely to go up in the next 24 hours as we see some really active fire behavior later today. When it comes to personnel though, this number is up too. We now have over 2,600 personnel, 29 crews, 18 helicopters, 281 engines, 76 dozers, and 66 water tenders. One thing I'll say about these helicopters is air operations have been kind of at a minimum recently because there's been so much smoke in the area, especially on the southern edge. So now that some of that smoke should be moving out with those gustier winds, they'll actually be able to get some air operations in here to put out some of these hot spots that you see moving into these more populated areas like Auberry. Now the one other thing I will point on out on this map if we zoom out here, you can actually see where this red flag warning is. It's right just to the northeast of the north complex and then just north of the creek fire. And then there's a fire weather watch right by the castle fire. So that is a big concern. Basically a red flag warning means there's gonna be gusty winds, low humidities, 
and a really good chance for rapid fire spread. So when it comes to the forecast for the Creek Fire, the big story again is that wind event that's going to be hitting this evening around 5 or 6, 30 to 40 mile per hour winds, that's going to lead to some rapid spread. But then there's good news after that. Once the cold front moves through, behind it, temperatures are going to be much cooler. You can see we're actually getting, getting into the 70s, about 10 degrees cooler than the typical average for this time of year. And then that's going to continue Friday, Saturday, even into Sunday a little bit. So that's certainly going to help firefighters there. Now, this wasn't in previous forecasts, but it is something to be concerned about. That second little wind burst that we could be seeing Friday afternoon, that actually on the windy map looked like it was going to be worse than the original wind event that's going to be happening this afternoon, but we'll have to see what happens with that one. Now, the other thing I'm concerned about is just this afternoon in general. It's going to be warm. We're going to get those wind gusts with the cold front and humidities are still relatively low. I will point out though, they're a lot higher than we've seen in the past, and that is thanks to this low pressure bringing in some of this ocean moisture. So there's good news and bad news with this forecast. Bad news has to do with the winds. The good news has to do with temperatures and humidities. So the next fire I wanna talk about is the Bobcat fire, because this has some pretty important things going on with it right now. The big thing that's happening with the Bobcat fire right now we're talking about the Mount Wilson Observatory yesterday and how on the southwestern edge of this fire, it was pushing closer and closer to Mount Wilson Observatory and Communications Tower. Well, the fire is now basically upon that site. And I know firefighters are possibly, as I speak, trying to battle this blaze. They do have some lines in around here. They've been burning out some of the vegetation ahead of time. So hopefully they'll be able to protect that site. You can see some of these spot fires though. That has also been a huge problem when it comes to the Bobcat fire. We've been getting spot fires about a mile away from the major blaze. And then the fuels in this area are critically dry, haven't burned in 60 years. So when you get one of these spots, there's a 90 to 100% chance it turns into another little fire. So that's been really the key spot I'm looking at in the Bobcat fire. The number one priority though is on the southern edge to keep this fire away from these more populated areas. You can see a couple of these spots, but I have heard that they moder the fire behavior really moderated throughout the overnight hours, so that's great news there. And you can actually see there's way less hot spots than we have been seeing in previous days. Now, as is true for every single one of our fires, with those south winds, wow, this actually looks even worse than I was expecting. With those south winds, the northern edge of all of our fires have just been taking off. And you can see that's especially true on this northeastern edge, where we also have some, some spot fires really starting up a mile, maybe even more, away from our major blaze. And all those hotspots are outside of the previous fire perimeter, so it gives you an idea of how much it's been able to grow in the last day. Now, with that growth, we're now up to 50,000 acres. We're still only at 3% containment. That's not exactly what we want to see, but it's likely due to just how dry the fuels are in this region. It's really hard to get a handle over this blaze. Now, resources have been critical for this fire, and every single day they're getting more and more, so that's encouraging to see. There's now over 1,200 personnel on this fire. When it comes to the weather forecast, I would say I'm worried about this one, but for different reasons than the other fires. For especially the Creek Fire in the North Complex, I'm really worried about that cold front bringing those 40 mile per hour winds and that red flag warning. For this fire, I'm actually more worried about the temperature and the humidity. You can see the temperature is going to be about 96 degrees today. And although it will be going down for the next two days, it's not all that much. 90 degrees is still extremely warm. And the other problem here is the humidity. This is actually higher than some of my sources were saying. I heard this morning was actually 5% humidity, which is 
just ridiculous, especially in the morning hours when we should be up in the 60 to 80% range. And unfortunately, while this shows that it should be at its lowest 18% today, I'm thinking we're more going to be around single digits to the low teens, especially in the higher elevation places. And you can see it's also extremely warm. But I guess the good news when it comes to the Bobcat fire is we're not going to get as intense wind gusts as the fires up in Northern California. You can see though for the afternoon hours the next two days there's going to be some tricky firefighting conditions as it's warm, you get those afternoon increase in winds, and then relative humidity stays extremely low. So I'm going to be watching this fire, especially this northern, southwestern, and southern edge. Really, there's a lot of things to be worried about with this one. But on the bright side, that southern edge has significantly calmed down, and that has been the major priority. So again, with all these fires, there's some good and bad news. When it comes to the CZU, SCU, and LNU fires, I will say that those are almost at 100% containment. They are no longer growing, which is great to hear. So again, you can see that red flag warning here just northeast of the north complex here. And there's, again, some good and bad news with this one. We'll start with the good news, and I would say that's on the southern edge here, where you can see there's basically no hot spots left. And this has been the main priority for CAL FIRE because this is near the populated areas like Orville. So that's great to see. What's not great to see is the northern and northeastern edge of this fire have seen some active behavior in the last 24 hours. Yesterday was hot, it was low humidity, there was some 20 mile per hour wind gusts, so that has led to some more fire growth in this area. This is another one of the areas I'm the most concerned about right now because this is likely to see the most intense wind gusts associated with that cold front. We could see some 40 to 45 mile per hour winds right here that are really going to test the containment lines on this northern zone. So when it comes to the north complex, it's now up over 280,000 acres, but it is at 36 containment. A lot of that number is likely due to that southern and eastern edge where fire behavior hasn't been as intense recently. Now, when it comes to the damages and losses, you can see, unfortunately, this number is up once again. We now have over 1,100 structures destroyed, and there are 15 fatalities associated with this blaze. Now, to put that into perspective, the North Complex is the number five deadliest California wildfire of all time. And then, like I've said before, when it comes to the damages, there is a map that CAL FIRE put together where you, you can actually zoom in to this area and see what houses have been destroyed, have minor damage, have no damage at all. So if you live in this area, I'm sure this will be of interest with you and you can find it in the link in the description. Again, with these damages and losses though, that is not what we wanna see. So my thoughts and prayers go out to everyone who has been affected by these wildfires. You can see personnel is up over 3,000. That's the most for any of the fires that we've been looking at. We've got 70 crews, 28 helicopters, 251 engines, 70 dozers, and 102 water tenders. So while that north zone with those containment lines is going to be certainly tested later today, there's a lot of resources to deal with it. So that's at least some good news there. Now when it comes to the forecast for Orville, you can see it's warm today. Not, not in the triple digits though, so that's not terrible. And then that's actually a perfect little graphic. You see there's smoke and haze, and then that cold front's gonna move in, and it's gonna push some of the smoke out. Now one thing I haven't talked about yet, but that's actually a double-edged sword. With all these fires, we've had some good protective smoke layers that have been keeping those temperatures down and those winds down as well. And as the smoke moves out, temperatures are actually gonna heat up. So while the temperature should be lower than it has been in previous days, the actual surface temperature might end up being higher as that smoke clears out. Just something to keep in mind. Now when it comes to Friday and Saturday though, temperatures continue to go down, so that's some great things to see. The humidity is going to rise as well and rise significantly. One thing with the Creek Fire, those humidities 
and bobcat fire as well. Those humidities have been staying extremely low at night, which has allowed for some rapid nighttime burning. With the North Complex, we've actually been seeing some moderate recoveries in the nighttime hours, so that's been helping firefighters. Now, you can't really see it on this map here, but the main area I'm concerned about with this one is around that 5 to 7 p.m. area where that cold front moves in and we get some intense wind gusts. I'm also worried about Friday evening where that second little wind burst is going to push in. But the good news there is by the time that wind event happens, temperatures are going to be much lower and humidity is going to be much higher. So again, good news and bad news with all these fires. Now the last one I'll talk about is the August complex over here. This is the largest wildfire in the history of California. And there's been two major areas of growth in the last 24 hours. One is this northern edge, which is due to those southerly winds pushing in associated with that low pressure system and the other edge has been this southwestern area of burning where you see these hot spots outside the previous fire perimeter main reason for that there are critically dry fuels and really steep terrain in this region so it's some really tricky firefighting conditions and aerial operations have been at a minimum because there's been so much smoke so again as that smoke clears, they might be able to actually get in some aerial operations, which will help because these are areas that are extremely tricky for hand crews. Now, when it comes to the August complex, we're now up over 800,000 acres. And again, that's the largest wildfire in the history of California. The good news is we have 30% containment on this fire. A lot of that containment has been on this very southern and eastern edge where they're actually just starting to mop up the mop up the fire. Now to put all these fires in perspective, just get a wide view of what's going on in California, of the top 20 largest California wildfires, one, two, three, four, five are still burning right now. Now when it comes to SCU and LNU, those aren't really growing anymore, so we don't have to worry about those. But when it comes to the August complex, the North complex, and the Creek fire, we're going to have to keep our eye on that wind event that's going to be coming in later this afternoon as that could lead to some rapid fire growth. As always, I'm going to continue to make these updates every single morning. And thank you to CAL FIRE, the U.S. Forest Service, for all the amazing work you do. Thank you to San Jose State for teaching me everything I know about wildfire. And if you or any of your friends or family have been affected by these wildfires, my thoughts and prayers go out to you. And thanks for watching.